Welcome to Missions Monday with Pastor Brent Oliver from Delphi First Assembly of God and Kokomo Southview Church. Today, we are blessed to share with you God's news of what is going on in various parts of the world. Monday. Well, hello there, and uh, welcome to Missions Monday. I have with me today as we take this time to to really just highlight some of the people that we as a congregation uh, are supporting in missions, uh, both uh, here in the state of Indiana and uh, the United States and around the world. Today, I have with me Joey Coons. Uh, Joey is a missionary over at Ball State University uh, in Muncie, Indiana. And uh, Joey, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, where are you from? Yeah, so I am, again, my name's Joey. I'm married to my wife, Hannah. Uh, no kids as of yet. But we uh, were from Muncie. Um, well, my wife was from Decatur, so a little bit south of Fort Wayne. Um, we met at Ball State. I grew up in Hartford City, um, okay. just, down, just down the road from Muncie, but I always went to church here in town. Um, still go to the same church, still have the same pastor that I had ever since a kid. And so yeah. um, been going to Is Muncie. That pastor Kevin Holt? No, it's oh. actually uh, Ma- a Pastor Carlton Bowden. Okay, all right. Yeah, so Very he's good. been a pastor yeah. ever since I was a little kid, and I've never had another pastor. So wow. uh, that's basically, uh, uh, you know, so grew up in Hartford City, but, you know, we do our shopping here in Muncie. We went to the movies, went to the, the mall's dying, but we would go to the mall. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so basically I just say I'm from Muncie. Okay, all right. So um, you are a ministry called Chi Alpha. I am. And uh, Chi Alpha... Uh, is a couple of Greek letters, ultimately stands for Christ Ambassadors. Yes. Um, and uh, so you're an ambassador of Jesus on the campus, and you're full-time there. I am. Uh, how did you get into this kind of ministry? Yeah. So <laughs> I went to Ball State my freshman year in 2009. I was a PE major, so physical education and health major. Um, went there mostly because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, Um and it was what we could afford. <laughs> so I was a commuter from Hartford City okay. to Ball State. Uh, wasn't really living for the Lord, though I grew up in church. Um, and had like a moment in my first week of college where I came to really actually follow Jesus and made a decision to follow him and was growing through that first semester, felt called into ministry. And so I transferred out of Ball State and started attending Global University, which for okay. Um, if anyone doesn't know that, it's an online Assemblies of God Bible school. Sure. So I did that, and I was doing that for a couple of years, and I was just really hungry for uh, community. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't have a lot of people my age in my church, and still don't, you know, to this day. But at that time, just really didn't have a lot of friendships, especially close Christian friendships who mm-hmm. were actually following the Lord. So not just people who wanted to say they're following God, but who are actually following God. Yeah. And so at that time, 2011, I started going to a Chi Alpha group that Josh and Allie Bowman, who were longtime Chi Alpha people, planted at Ball State. And so I started going, fell in love with it. And I asked the director, Josh, like, hey, how do you do this? Like, this is awesome just pouring into college people. And he said, you raise a budget like a missionary and you get trained up and you come on campus. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll I'll think about that. And later he told me that he walked away from that conversation thinking there was no way I follow up on that, on that. uh, A lot of confidence in you, huh? Right. Yeah, exactly. I had a lot of confidence in me. And so then in 2014, uh, that's when I officially moved into working as a missionary associate Mm -hmm. with Chi Alpha and then in 2019, when Josh and Ali stepped down as being directors of the ministry, that's when my wife and I stepped into being directors of okay. Allstate. Wow. Um, and so generally your ministry is, uh, you say, what, what generally is the ministry that takes place on campus? What's your intent? What do you do? Yeah, so my intent, uh, I was asking the Lord, like, what's my calling this summer? I, I wanted some, like, clarity there. And I felt like he said, your calling I mean me, Joey, your calling is to teach the scriptures and to help people follow Jesus. And th- that is just very simply what we try to do at Ball State. We kind of have three main umbrellas that we do in our ministry. We have our service and um, out, like outreachy events, which have been stifled a little bit because of COVID this year. 
but then we have small group ministry and leadership and then one-to-one mentoring and, and discipleship. And that kind of, honestly, everything fits into those three components. Uh, we're going to be adding a mission component next year, taking mission trips again. So that'll be kind of a fourth component. Um, but that's, a, that, I mean, essentially what we're trying to do is just teach the students the scriptures. I can't tell you how disheartening it is to have students who come in from years and years and years of church background that have no idea what the scriptures say, yeah. have no idea of the way of Jesus. They have no idea of his teaching and like, what is truth, you know, in, in like a postmodern culture, like everything is true, but at the same time, everything's not true, you know? So my truth, yeah. your truth. Yeah. Right, exactly. And that's kind of like what we'd, so I, I very simply want to teach the scriptures. Biblical literacy is a really big deal to me. Okay. And then I just want to help people follow Jesus. And, and when I mean, when I say by that is like actually walking out day to day, not just come to service, but how are you following Jesus when you're living with your roommates, when you're going to the store, when you go home to family, when you're being launched to the career? Sure. So you're encountering um, students that have a church background. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden you have people that really weren't in that church background at all. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, how do you connect with them? Yeah. So Ball State is a party school. And so um, <laughs> you go to parties. <laughs> um, I don't personally go to new parties, um, but we throw really good ones. And okay. so, right. um, so part of our strategy, and again, this year it's been a little stifled because of COVID, yeah. but we try to throw really good parties. Mm -hmm. We don't have alcohol and drugs. So everybody listening, like just, you can put, you take that off the table. Yeah. Um, you can keep your credentials. That's good. Although, right. Although we've had fun stories where non-Christians have brought those kind of things to our parties and we've had to, <laughs> we had to scramble a little bit, but we're like, Hey, we're reaching lost people. They don't know, yeah. you know, like they don't know, but we throw really good parties. Um, that's one main way mm -hmm. that we connect with people yeah. is that we, you know, they won't come to a service. They won't come to a small group. They wouldn't come to a worship night, right. anything like that. All the things that our Christian students will come to, mm -hmm. which are good and needed. And we do. Yeah. But we throw really good events like a Christmas party. Um, in the spring, we normally would do um, something we call XA Games. That was kind of like a mix between the Olympics and X Games and fun team building kind of things that anybody can just be part of, very visible on campus. Right. Um, we try to have like just games that we play on campus, you mm -hmm. know, where we'll have a bunch of guys out on the field playing Frisbee and girls too, um, you know, like playing Frisbee or spike ball or whatever the latest plastic game that every college person is into. Um, so um, I, we just really believe like Jesus comes to bring life. And part of that life is to have a lot of fun. And that's a stigma that I think a lot of people are like, oh, we don't want to go to church and just be bored. And yeah. well, Jesus doesn't want us to have fun. Jesus absolutely wants you to have fun. Sure. Like life with Jesus is fun. So that's, that's one of the main ways that we, we do is just have it. And obviously having a presence mm -hmm. on campus, we'll meet people, sit down with them, eat lunch. But um, a big thing is we do is we throw some really good parties and good events for people to come to. It's a good way to connect with people and obviously probably follow up from there. Yeah. Uh, we try to build relationships and then off we go. Right. And we put a lot of onus on our small group leaders. So it's like, we don't put everything on the staff team to uh -huh. like follow up with every single person. We say, Hey, you student who is leading a small group, you get their number and mm -hmm. follow up with them, get lunch, get coffee, invite them to your house, like yeah. go, like invite them to small group. Maybe they'll come. We've had plenty of atheist students come to small group for whatever reason. They don't believe in God, but they came to small group mm -hmm. and actually came to know the Lord <laughs> eventually, wow. yeah. you know, so it's like, it's kind of, it's just interesting that how some of that works out, but it just, we found that if we give students responsibility, Mm -hmm. They take it way farther than the staff can. They just have more access. Yeah. It's kind of like the Mordecai and Esther principle of like, we're Mordecai on the outside a lot. We can do some things, yeah. but the students are Esther. Students have the authority and the, and the presence in a place that we just can't have it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Well, that's exciting. Um, I know the year of uh, COVID has been challenging. It has been because the very thing that you're saying, let's have great events and bring everybody in. It's like COVID says, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so that makes it very difficult. Um, I'm glad to hear. And, and you, you told me that uh, you're actually in spite of all of it, you've really seen some progress this year. 
We have. Yeah. So it's, um, and again, this is like, as I was telling you before, this has nothing to do with like our brilliance or our charisma or anything. Um, honestly, I was coming into the year thinking, well, this is just going to be a down year and we can't do anything about it. So <laughs> I'm a, I'm often a half, uh, the, empty glass kind of guy, mm, you know, the and, great man of faith. I am a man, great man of faith, you know? And so, um, so the, I came in thinking like, listen, we'll just, we're just going to go deep with the mm -hmm. students that we have, mm -hmm. disciple them intentionally and try to build for something next year. Um, Cause normally like, especially during welcome week. So welcome week is our big push at the beginning where we meet a ton of people. Normally we have hundreds of names sure. for students to connect with. We had none this year mm -hmm. um, at all. And so it really forced us to, it actually kind of showed us some really good things. Like we, thought we were being intentional, mm -hmm. but it really showed us how unintentional we actually were. We were just relying on systems that we had, mm -hmm. but if we took away the systems, we really had to figure out how do we do it? So everybody that we connected with this year was just intentional conversations that we just went up and talked mm -hmm. to or invited people to things or whatever, or sitting down with them in the, in the dining halls. And we were probably around 40-ish students coming to a service last year. Um, this year, we've been pretty consistently in the 60, 65 range of students coming this year. And normally you get a big regression at the end of the fall. You know, you kind of get the big push at the beginning and then it drops off. We didn't get that. Um, we've maintained a steady pulse of 60, 65 students at service. And we're connected with far more than that uh, through small groups who people yeah. who come to service. Um, that's just been steady all year and it's and, and also we're off campus so it's like even two mile drive to like and it's a hassle to go get people's cars and pick them <laughs> up it hasn't hindered it so wow. we yeah. can just look back and say this has been completely god and uh, and we have great leaders too i mean we've had leaders who have fought hard yeah. for their small groups yeah and that, and that yeah. makes a difference when you have people who will fight for people sure sure whatever it takes whatever it takes yeah well uh, hey, I appreciate you being on campus. Uh, yeah. We joined together with you from the very beginning of your ministry mm -hmm. uh, over there and stuff. And so as a church, I'm thankful that we're able to support that and see that God's reaching people through that. Uh, appreciate you spending time with me today and uh, probably uh, see you maybe do this again sometime. Yeah. Thank right. you for the support. Thank you for the ways that you've partnered with us and a year of inconsistency with COVID having yeah. consistent support partners have been a huge blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. This has been brought to you by Delphi First Assembly of God and Kokomo Southview Church. To contact us or send us your prayer request, testimony of answered prayer, or Bible questions, please see the information on the screen. May God's salvation through Jesus Christ overflow into your life with his joy. God bless until we see you again.